Today we go behind the scenes and show you how the sausage gets made on today's Unnamed Real Estate Podcast. Is that over the top? I can never tell anymore. This is uh, Charles Ray Dawson. I am a sales manager and associate broker for ProStar Realty. And this is the Unnamed Real Estate Podcast. And the reason why I decided to do this start is because um, I got some feedback last week from a uh, viewer who commented that one of my, um, th th on the background, it looked like I had a, an award or something displayed that looked like it was crooked. And I realized, you know, people don't really know how my, you know, setup is back here. So what I'm going to do is... You know, does this actually let you switch the screen halfway through? That would be awesome. No, nope, I got that. I got that. So hold on. All right. So this is not a mirror. All right. This is actually a window. And but it also works as a mirror, which is really great. Except when you come in in the morning, you look at that and go, "Oh my God, I am really gaining weight." I always, I always wanted a full-length mirror in my office just so I could check my standards and everything. And it doesn't really work out that well, but it, when you turn the lights out, you suddenly realize, yeah, there's actually a tree and everything going on out there. Now, the this is my cue, all right? This, this is where the magic gets made, all right? And the framework that the viewer called out, you know, saying that it looks crooked, I, I've, I played around with this, and I really think what it really is is just that when you're looking at it at a certain angle, from the display, it just looks like it's a little off, right? This is a great poem, by the way. If you, do you fear the wind? Do you fear the force of the wind, the slash of the rain? Go face them and fight them, be savage again. Go hungry and cold like the wolf. Go wade like the crane. The palms of your hands will thicken, the skin of your cheek will tan. You'll grow ragged and weary and swarthy, but you'll walk like a man. Hamlin Garland. So, friend gave me that. I really like it. So, this is my other recording bailiwick right here. This is my corner office window, air quote, corner office with a nice view of now. North Mountain, some decorative plastic so plants that I put in there. But as you can see, at a certain point in time, this power, this light, starts shining on my face and throws my lighting off. From a lighting standpoint, I use regular desk lamp shining off there to give me uh, a filler light. My primary light I got for Christmas is over here. I used to use a ring light. And this is actually my office. When I actually come in and have to sit down at a desk, this is what I work out of. This, this is my rig, basically. I do have some motivational pictures. That is a picture of a man working in a coal mine in Durham County, in the Northumbria region of England, where my family is from, and every once in a while when I'm sitting here whining and sniveling about how bad my life sucks, I glance up at that and realize, bitch, you could be digging coal, suck it up. So, you don't have a motivational thing like that in your office, you really do. I got motivational pictures of people that I've helped, I have motivational check, you know, I have my library, some of my books are up in here, the rest of them are scattered all over. Here's our various files. There's your calculator that you always need in place and various drawers, widgets, and whatnot. So this is where I spend a lot of my time doing my thing. And of course, that's the road out there. And every time you hear a motorcycle go by, it's because of those guys. So let's go to the numbers and we'll kick, kick off with the rest of the show. And now the numbers for January 19th, 2022. Active this week were 5,266, which is down 240 from the week before. This is continuing our slide since uh, December 8th. New listings that came in this week are 2,136, up 225. Our pendings this week are 1,892, up 101 from last week. Our under contracts looking for backups are at 1,109, up 170. Contracts for the buyer's contingency are 78, which is up 6. Closings this week dropped three to 1,750, and coming soon to an MLS near you are 828 new listings. So the numbers continue. The um, 
the faucet is definitely on. You can see that with the amount of new listings that are coming in. We are increasing uh, weekly on the new listings, but as you can also see, the buyers are still there and they're still hungry. And they're still taking houses off the market faster than they're going on right now. Where this probably will, will continue on in the trend is just there is a, still a lot of demand out there. And that demand is making sure that houses don't stay on the market for that long. The continuation of this that we're going to see is... Um, with with interest rates change that we had um, a couple weeks ago, and um, man, the, I, I saw something the other day that said the Fed is talking about adding an extra uh, point or a half point to the prime um, lending over the course of this year. So that definitely knocks up the prime lending rate is one of the numbers that uh, your mortgage number comes out of. And um, so w the days of the threes are over. I don't see anything. You know, when when you are going into an inflationary period, the inflation, according to some economic theorists, because remember, th there's a reason why they call economics the dismal science, right? But the concept is there's too much money chasing too few products, all right? There's two ways to get out of this. We can increase the product so money has something to buy, which reduces. That's called supply side, right, F for people who are paying attention back in the 80s. Um, and by raising the supply of things, you reduce the price of things. Seriously. Um, to, so your supply equals the amount of demand out there. And, and start, things start working out that way. Um, because of our, our issues with the supply chains right now, we're having a really hard time ramping up supply in everything. You know, houses, vehicles, so on and so forth. Right. Or we can start figuring out ways to reduce money out of the economy. Now, in the 80s, um, what they did is they ran the inf the interest rates up to humongous numbers, especially by today's standards. But by doing that, they pulled the excess money out of the market, which got inflation out of control. Inflation's a scary thing. It's really easy to get into. It's really hard to get out of. It's sort of like dating a tr crazy chick. So, and unfortunately, we are... We are in an inflationary cycle. Um, the last numbers I heard is that we haven't had inflation rate like this since eight, uh, 1992. So we'll see how this plays out. You're going to start seeing this impact, how much interest rates are, which affects how many people can afford to buy, and then how much can they afford to buy. This is going to start having a slowing effect on the market, and we'll start seeing... You know, I'm not saying we're going to see prices drop. I mean, seriously, you're not going to see prices drop. There's a whole bunch of reasons why behind that. But we're going to see the growth of the prices slow. So historically, we're supposed to be about 2.5% a year. All right. So, you know, let's, let's stay on this. Let's keep watching this. If you're interested in getting ready to buy in the spring, just understand it's it's turning into one of those sooner the better. All right. And that interest rate goes up another ha uh, quarter point or something like that, you're suddenly going to be able to buy less house. Meanwhile, the house prices are growing. So, um, <clears throat> Last week, I mentioned that we're, we um, came in with a new um, uh, computer system. And there is a lot of technology that goes behind the scenes at real estate. If you are a realtor or thinking about becoming a realtor, a lot of what I'm going to be discussing here is for you. Um, if you're just um, buyer, seller, just, you know, Ray Dawson fanboy or fangirl, you know, you get to hear me talk about a whole bunch of technical things for the next few minutes. So with the advent of technology, real estate uh, has always been a little slow off the draw, right? Uh, when um, people are creating new software, no, nobody really thinks, oh, yeah, we can completely disrupt the real estate market this way. They go for everything else. Hey, let's figure out how we can sell books quicker. Hey, how, how much, let's figure out how we can sell groceries. Hey, let's figure out how we can automate taxi cabs. We'll find this little legal workaround saying it's ride sharing so we don't have to worry about getting a taxi medallion. Um, and then eventually people came and decided to get into real estate. And a lot of people thought it was Zillow was the first major change to real estate but it really wasn't right? and it wasn't even the pager right? what it was was the mls system now let me show you on the screen here this is the mls system all right this is this is the way i sit this this right here the ability to search for properties for sale replaced what used to be books books that were published weekly books that were delivered to brokerage 
houses. Books that individual agents would have to come in that day with their list of clients and what their clients were looking for. And they would pour through the books all right, to find the houses that they wanted. And when it first went over to MLS, I'm sure, I was not around during, back then, I'm sure there's some agents who just hated the new computer system. What you're looking at right now on Flex, this is like the third iteration of how they've changed this thing up since I've started doing real estate. And really super drives me nuts, right? Because I, I liked the way it was two reiterations ago, and they're literally dumbing it down. They're turning it into an iPhone app, right? And because I used to be able to set up these little searches and stuff like that, and this was the quick search, all right? You see right here they call it the quick search because they used to have the real search. And they'd have like the real search for adults and they'd have the quick search for other people. And not enough people were using a real search because they got really happy with doing the quick search. And quick search is fine. It covers like the top 20, 30, you know, things you want. List price, you know, we don't want to go over 500,000. All right. Dwelling type, we want to make sure it's a single family home. And we need at least three bedrooms, all right? Notice how this number keeps dropping every time I, I make a change on this, right? Because this is a reductive search. It starts with all the houses out there. Every time you add a criteria, it reduces the amount of houses down. Right? And let's say we need a three bedroom, all right? So if you're looking for a three bedroom house under $500,000, you have 1,841 to, to find. This is... You know, it is one of those things, this works 90% of the time. When you're trying to get the other 10% of the time, it starts getting really clunky, all right? Um, if you start looking for specific um, school districts, all right, you need to start typing in stuff like school districts and whatnot. And you have to be able to spell school, so that actually pops up when you do that. If you're looking for accessibility features, all right, you can scroll through all of this stuff. I'm on a 220 dryer hookup and find it the other system used to be you just went to that page and selected it, it was actually faster if you're trying to do a harder search now it's slower if you want to do a harder search but as you can see if you wanted to buy a house with a 220 volt dryer hookup for under five hundred thousand dollars with three bedrooms or more you have 106 properties to choose from so this is what the agents use on the back end right and then i can sit here and e email these listings to a potential buyer and enter their contact name here, hit send, boom, off to the races. That's pretty cool. What happened was the agents are still the gatekeepers of the information. We have the information. We have the list of houses. You, the consumer, don't. So what we're going to do is you need to come to us on bend and knee as supplicants to our, our greatness and say, oh, Ray, find me my house I cannot possibly find on my own. And I would find you and grant you the, the beauty of my presence. And then Zillow came along. And agents had a total crap fest over this thing. Because what it was doing is it was taking this information that we were looking here and the ability to search and taking it away from the real estate agents the disseminators of information and giving it to the great unwashed masses, the consumer base, which on paper is a really great idea. What this did to disrupt the industry is it divorced the, the need of a buyer to go to a real estate agent and start, per, you know, start looking for houses. Their data sucked. All right. Every one of these houses, every one of these little green dots on here that you see is a house, either active or coming soon. Zillow's default setting was active under contract backups. All right, let's watch this change out. We just went from 108 to survey says. Wow, really having to think about this one. So the, the coming soon added listing those are houses that are about to be on the market now we just went to 173 all right so we take out the active real quick the 173 goes 87 of these houses out of the 173 already have offers on them you really have a slim chance of getting these houses these houses actually have to fall 
off the market and back on onto the market for you to get at them. And Zillow would do that. I and Zillow early on, they would show you houses that were pending. Right? And the houses that were pending, these are all the ones in orange, you would see them on Zillow as if they were a house for sale. And since they did not bother to update their database at any time, you'd even see houses that were closed sometimes up to six months out. That house is dead. That house is done. That house has been moved into. So you're on Zillow looking at 1,755 houses. And it's a great interface. Let me tell you what. It was it was pretty back in the day. But what you're not seeing, actually, let me add active back on there. All right. You're looking at 1,841 houses. All right. When ultimately, the only houses that you have a snowball's chance of buying, all right, was 100 do 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 was 86 so I, I would get these lists from people and they, they would be like 10 houses long they would all be sold they'd all be pending they'd all be under contracts looking for backups and you you might get one or two actual active and i tell them quit going to zillow the data is bad and they would go to zillow so technology improved other people competitors start moving into the market and so Buyers now have the opportunity to search for properties on their own through better systems than Zillow, more intuitive systems than Zillow's, Zillow's with more accurate data. And we don't have that problem anymore. And from, a, from an innovation standpoint, right, one, of the, one of the problems I had with MLS and the MLS is throughout the country at the time is that they were still working under the no we need to control the information we can't share that information with other people mentality and they were already been beat it's like dude you done lost that war you lost that war as soon as you signed the piece of paper allowing Zillow to start pulling your your listings off strangely enough a whole bunch of those initial people who decided to sign those documents wound up working for Zillow at the end of the day with really really nice hiring bonuses Leave that open to your interpretation. Anyways, so instead of the MLSs opening up their feed so other people do it, they decided to do something else. They sold what was called an IDX feed. And an IDX feed allowed you, a real estate brokerage or agent, to embed the search engine into your website. So you could steer people to your site and they could do their own searches, but on your site, in your ecosystem. You don't have to worry about them wandering off to Zillow clicking on the tell me more about this uh, property button and then having some rogue agent who's paying five thousand dollars a month to be that or it was a thousand dollars a month back then to be that person suddenly coming in there and sharking your client away from you but because they weren't looking at they were still looking at it with the, with the mindset of we need to be to hold the information back and not give it out they never put the time or effort in to make the idx feed good and they never came in to make the IDX work. All right. It was pretty much there to generate revenue for the, for the MLSs out of the pockets of the real estate agents. And the real estate agents felt they needed to pay this money to try to compete with these other sources. That is, that has stirred a lot of the technology in uh, real estate lately. So now let's move ahead. Back in the old days, you used to have uh, what's called a CRM. Customer relationship management, right? And what CRM does, this is actually my original CRM system that I used. Still am using, still love this thing. It is Windows 98 graphics. It is old school. This thing is, it's just not pretty. Look at this. This is not a pretty document. Now, this is not a pretty layout. All right, but what it does is do is it's functional as hell. All right. It's it's like uh, Excel. Most people who use Microsoft Excel probably use about 10, 15%. Accountants and math people might use 10 to 20% of it, but Excel has so many things this thing that can do, nobody ever uses it all. Same with this thing. This has everything you could ever want, right? It's just ugly and it's sort of clunky. The interface is not the greatest in the world, right? But, you know, 
uh, for my clients who are watching this video cast, those, those cute little uh, postcards and everything that I've been sending out over the holidays, it literally came out of this. All right, I'm I'm just setting this whole thing up. I'm doing a bulk mailing. I'm going through here. I'm selecting which categories of people I want to go to. I come up with, I grab the template, email, university investment property opportunities. They've already rewritten all these things. And then I hit bulk it and send it and it goes out. It takes me about five, 10 minutes. I never really did this before. Um, because most of my business is a business and I get through word of mouth. People who worked, worked with me before people who were working with somebody who's worked with me before. I did not go all in on the, the big massive mailings, the big massive postcards or anything like that. This is not a bad system. I did not utilize it as, as hard as I could have, right? I did use it for tasking and calendaring and stuff like that. But a lot of times, I mean, I could go months without logging into this thing. The other thing I really like about Realty Juggler, and this is a side, is it had the clever little quotes down here every day. Every sale has five basic obstacles. No need, no money, no hurry, no desire, no trust. Zig Ziglar. Anybody who sells knows who Zig Ziglar is. And... It, it sort of it sort of shows you because I remember in the '90s when everybody started having a little quotes in their signature lines. I have a quote in my signature line. Oh, uh, I pulled that in, and I've just never gotten rid of it because I actually really, really like the the sentimentality, you know, the meaning behind my message. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to one of my emails that I've sent you and find and, and read that. So, Realty Juggler did what it needed to do, and the other thing is it is damn freaking cheap. I came in, you cannot get this at $99 a year. I got it at $99 a year because I signed up for it many, many years ago. Right now, I want to say that the price is like $179 or whatnot. And it's a great system. It really is. I'm, I'm a fan of it. But things move on, and it's time to move on. And so you go and you create yourself your own website. Now... I've gone through three reiterations of websites so far. Um, this is my third. Still, it's under construction. Uh, just remember, fools, children, and middle management should never see a project half completed. All right, and this is about 75% completed. I'm not loving the font. All right, not loving the fonts. I'm a, I'm a big font nerd. Let me show you why. See? fonts make a difference. So I'm going to change out this font. Um, I don't think that this is really, um, I don't like the fact that I don't feel that it's um, ADA compliant. I think uh, as I get older and I start realizing I have a harder time seeing stuff up close. I got my first progressive glasses uh, last week and actually are sort of kind of loving them, although vanity keeps me from recording with them on. Um, I'm going to have to... Um, you know, I start looking a little bit more as like, hey, can that actually be red on the background, right? I also don't like this logo. There's no place like home and we're here to help. I need to put my own stuff in there. All right, your, ho your home, your dreams, your agent, Ray Dawson. I like that. It, it just works. Right? But what the new websites do have, all right, is remember I was telling you earlier about people going to Zillow because their agents were holding the information back? This has, I want to go look at Phoenix houses. I want a three bedroom plus. I only want a single family or I want single family. I don't want condos, multifamily, commercial land, rentals, mobile homes, business opportunities, commercial leases, season rentals, townhomes, or residential leases. In fact, a couple, you know, I'm going to turn all that stuff off because uh, Ray doesn't do commercial. Ray does not do uh, season rentals. I have people here in the house who do that, all right? So if you got somebody who wants to come in with a season rental, I can refer you out to that. Just same thing with commercial. I have all right? uh, business opportunities. ProStar Realty does not do business opportunities, right? We are not going to sell yours shake shack or whatever it is we don't get involved with those people all right but same search i was do, uh, was showing you on the other one back here over here on the mls all right you can now do it do, do it on this site hit search and this is actually coming directly from the mls all 
All right, just uh, like I was showing you over there. I did screen this down so you're only looking at Phoenix Homes. All right, these are not all houses that are listed by ProStar Realty. These are all houses in the MLS system. A lot of people think that, you know, if I go to the brokerage site, I'm only going to see the brokerage houses. I'm not going to see all the houses. No, it's all right here. Now, after you look at a couple of houses, I'm going to have you register. Right, you can see up here, I'm already registered in as Charles. That's because I have a test account set up on this. If you need to contact me now, you can click on contact me now. If you want to set up an alert on this, you can get the same email alerts I'm going to get at the exact same time. I will get the alert going, hey, this house just hit the market that worked good for Jody. All right. And Jody's getting the email at the same time. Hey, here's a house that you might might like. The other um and this is this is a new thing. This is this is the way the world is right now, right? The information is out there, right? This is how you get the information. Because right? your search starts here. We also have a home valuation on this, so you can do an instant find out instantly. It's pretty much a, it's an algorithm based based number. And like I say, algorithms are great. They cannot come into your house and take a deep breath and go, you own cats, don't you? That is important for evaluating a house, right? The computer is not going to do that yet. Although I did literally see something the other day where they're talking about having smell detection or something on your new Alexa. So, you know, they can tell what you're cooking and whether or not to, oh no, that's not, you know, that's not a smoke fire or anything like that. She's just trying to cook again. All right. But you can pull up a really quick number on this. And of course, if you ever do want a real BPO of a property, give me a call. All right. I actually love doing that. I got a trainee coming on. I'm teaching him how to do it. I'd love to be able to do, uh, show him one in the wild. All right. You also do the uh, instant listing alerts, you know, same thing we we're talking about. You can actually set up going, hey, I just bought the place. I want to know every house that shows up in my neighborhood. All right. Get that. We do work with a couple of lenders that we're going to have set up on here. If you want to start your uh application whether or not for a refinance or purchase you can click on that and you still have questions you can you know you can contact us and you'll see a testimonial coming in about somebody saying something cool about me this is from uh leslie fish um really nice lady a little crazy uh she's um one of the uh old hippie folk singers here in town who's actually quite famous in the old science fiction fantasy convention circuit uh, a lot of songs that you you would hear back in the day when you know they used to have filk going on we're actually leslie fish's song so you'll see my individual listings on here you'll see other listings that we have in the brokerages and pulling across and a little bio down here in the areas that we cover so this is the website and the last most important thing i want to tell you about this is that you can click right here and go straight to my business facebook page then like it and start getting my information that I share there. You can go to my Instagram page that I put nothing on because I don't do Instagram, although I do have an Instagram account. That's sooner or later I need to start paying attention to. And of course, you can go to this YouTube page right here that you are watching right now by clicking on the link. So if you ever, you know, are sitting out there trying to figure out how, oh my God, my day is going so bad. You know what could cheer me up? Watching one of Ray's real estate uh, shows, right? You can click right there. It'll have all the stuff you can, you, or if you can't sleep, you can go in there and go back through. Remember when I was discussing the contracts for hours on ends last year? Yeah. You could go to sleep with me discussing section eight to you. Think about it. So that is the new website and what we're coming up on this. Other things about the website is that this is stirred or, or run through our new platform here called KB Core. All right, and KB Core is the replacement of the Realty Juggler that I was just telling you about. It does that. It does the website hosting on the side. And from a real estate standpoint and from a realtor standpoint, um, you, if you are out there trying to make it in the big real estate world, you already need a CRM to help you remember to get in contact with people. And you need a way to automate that. Now, I'm not a big fan of automation. I prefer person to person interface. Um, as I mentioned last week and stuff like that. And yeah, I do apologize. I got a little whiny last week. I, I reread that, uh, during, uh, process or rewatched it during processing. And I'm really like, I'm sort of sniveling here. What the hell? I did not mean to be sniveling or anything like that, but this is the nature of the beast. So, you know, this kind of interface, this kind of interaction is what a real estate agent is going to need to have and going to need to do if you're going to survive in the future. Right? You're, you can't just 
live on pure word of mouth alone because sooner or later you sell houses to everybody you know who are ever going to own a house. And then at that point, you're going to wind up looking at people who are just, okay, hey, anybody want to move? Anybody want to upside? Anybody want to get into something else? No, 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 no. We're fine. We're at. We're going to stay here and die. Okay, great. Well, I can't outlast you. I need somebody to die now so I can sell their house. All right. You don't want to go that route. So this turns into a system right here where it will remind you of things like your your client's birthdays. I never ask clients my birthdays or if uh, I ever send you a message going, hey, happy birthday. It's because Facebook told me that it was your birthday. Um, other things like that, home anniversaries. Um, I was doing that in Realty Juggler, you know, and um, letting everybody know, hey, it's your one year anniversary, this, that, and the other thing. That's awesome, you know. Um, but KV Core can do that all, all automatically. And then also what it does is it can assign you work, which is really important for agents who, you know, you got self-starters, you got uh, people who are really good at being their own boss. And then I honestly think uh, the 80% of real estate agents who quit being real estate agents, the majority of the reason boils down to they don't have anybody telling them what to do next. All right? This is an auto has the option and the ability to, to be your automated boss. Right? And it tells you these are what you need to do today. These are the calls you need to do today. And it also comes with a killer little app. And your killer little app right, will allow you to do everything you need on your phone. And unfortunately, it's not pretty, so there's not really anything to really look at on this thing. Right? And since we're just setting up, I have no activity yet or anything to show. <clears throat> but it's got a dollar feature. So if I'm driving from point A to point B, and I got like 20 minute drive, I'm driving out to Timbuktu or something, I can sit there and go, hey, phone, dial the next person I need to talk to today. And the phone will dial that person and then connect me to it. And then mark down the log that I called. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. That's pretty powerful. So, and agents can use that through the download app when they get this. So it also syncs with your regular Outlook calendar and everything. So, you know, you can keep all track if you're talking to somebody and you're setting up the next appointment. All right. You're looking right here and you tell, hey, I can't do that. I already got a 930 to 10 o'clock. Or sometime that day, I'm getting a call from the veterans ad company. Or I got this going on this day and this going on this date. And so <clears throat> you don't wind up having to worry about double booking because you have your calendar here and somebody's trying to ask you, hey, can you commit to a time period right now? So that's um, that's another really cool thing about KV Core. So I'm excited about this. I am drinking from the fire hose trying to learn about this entire thing. And I'm pretty sure... Um, this might actually be the last time I have to talk to you guys about this. Uh, if you're a real estate agent with another brokerage or anything like that, um, or is interested, you know, and hey, tell me how great this works, um, give me a call. Let me know. I'll, I am a user. I'm not a salesperson of this thing, and I will be critical when it needs to be critical, and I'm not critical when it doesn't need to be not critical. Their help desk freaking sucks. All right. And the reason why their help desk sucks for two reasons. One, a lot of the things that you're trying to fix is going to be buried under the help window. If I'm trying to work here and I'm looking up something here, I have to close this every time to do something, then open the instructions back up. All right? Wouldn't it be cool if I just click and drag that over to the other side? Just a suggestion. Anyways, so that's number one. Number two is that the their help desk um they're really big on why don't you text us and you can have a text conversation with these people that will go for hours simply because it is taking them a long time to get back to you. I'm, I'm serious. Um, let me show you. Melina, it wasn't her fault. She drew the short thing. I ask a question. All right. Here. Da da da. All right, now I'm not expecting a call back that night. All right. And, but the next morning I get this and then we go all morning long. All right. Where she's trying to fix my stuff. And she kept coming back, not to my problem, but to what her, her little checklist told her to ask. All right. I'm, 
I almost want to hit that thing, be able to push a button going, hey, I know how to turn on a computer. Just kick me over to level two, all right? If I'm talking to you, it's because it wasn't in your frequently asked questions, and I've already stated pretty much anything your first level call techs are going to be working on. All right, so let's just jump right up in that. All right, so they literally told me what they had already told over here in the FAQ, frequently asked questions in the help when I looked it up, just repeated it to me, and I told them the problem. I'm not seeing the tab at all. And then they go to the browser and they say, you need to open it up in the browser, all right? They wanted me to actually stop, install Chrome, and then get back to him. And that's where I lost her because she mentally in her head said, okay, I don't need to talk to this guy for 15 minutes. So she quit paying attention to my conversation. She gave me the canned response about how you need to use Chrome. And I just said, firing up another last top. And then she hits with her next canned text response, all right? And I went there. And then she goes, look there. And this is where I come in. It keeps defaulting and then seeing the how screenshot it that worked out. This is a 30 minute of me just firing questions into the dark. All right. Until we figured out. Office manager had different rights than my super user rights. And so I was never going to see the tab. Never in any of the stuff that said, oh, by the way, you have to be this awesome to see the tab. You can't just be this awesome. And that was good 40 minutes of my morning right to come up with something it was nothing but a freaking rights issue and so she asked for feedback she got feedback all right and then she was apologetic and i basically said hey melinda it's a uh, not your fault all right your management sucks so um, please give your tech support manager my feedback so I have never heard what happened after that thing. So other than that, KB Core is awesome. All right. I'm really enjoying it. Um, if you are starting to get weird emails from me that doesn't sound like my voice is probably not a generated KB Core email coming out. And this is where we're going with all that. So these all things being said, I've exceeded the limit of time that I wanted to talk because, hey, we all know that I just get going and I start talking. Um, thank you very much for watching this episode. Next week is our one-year anniversary. I'm going to try to spend the next uh, couple of days uh, going through seeing if I can come up with some clips of what I consider about, like my greatest rants, greatest snarky conversations, whatever. Put them together unless you guys can come up with a better idea in the next week. So thank you very much. Um, peace out. Have a great weekend. Be safe out there. And thanks for watching.